guys, it's Vanessa and um, today I just wanted to give you an update. I know it's been like a really long time since I posted. Um, this is my cat Zoro by the way. Um, here. Hey Zoro. Um, I do have a lot of time on my hands. Um, I recently moved out of state. Um, I'm originally from Texas and I moved over to Utah and um, I'm taking a work hiatus right now. So. I have a lot of time on my hands to make more content and you know this has always been like a part of me like my journey and to be able to share my experience with you guys and my journey because um, during my darkest times with Cushing's disease it was survivor stories that really helped me to get through and um, to become stronger. Weather in Utah, like it is just so dry here. The climate is so dry. So it's, it's sometimes my throat is just so dry and um, I'm sorry if I sound like <clears throat> shaky or raspy, um, but that's the reason why. So this video will be broken down in two parts. Um, the first part will be the mental health part, the um, psychiatric symptoms that I had, and then the second part will be the physical symptoms that I had. So let's go. All right, let's start by talking about the psychiatric symptoms I had. Um, the first would be the depression. My depression has gotten so much better now ever since I had the adrenalectomy to remove the tumor. Um, that was one of my most debilitating symptoms and um, I'm happy to report that it has been resolved and um, I no longer have really bad thoughts of wanting to hurt myself or just feeling like buried in a hole that I couldn't get out of. Um, I no longer feel that way, like I am living my best life, I love life right now. Um, I just don't have any urge to be sad anymore so I'm really thankful that that symptom resolved for me. Um, the next symptom is anxiety. I think I'm a very highly sensitive person, so growing up I've always had anxiety, and I'm not sure if that had anything to do with maybe having Cushing's, you know, early on in life and just not catching it. But um, I feel as though ever since this, the surgery to remove my tumor, um, I my anxiety has gotten a lot better, and um, I just feel. Like I don't have panic attacks anymore, which is amazing because panic attacks is just, you know, it feels like you're dying and um, I'm just really glad that that resolved and um, I am on Celexa again. Um, there was like a year gap where I was not on Celexa. I got off of it um, after my surgery and life wasn't busy I wasn't doing much with my life but during that time so I just wasn't stressed out and so um, when I decided to get back on Selexa it was when I started um, being self-employed and started my own small business and um, I just felt the pressure you know it was it was unhealthy for me and um, I just couldn't relax and I worried a lot about everything that I needed to do for my business and um, so that's when I decided to get back on Selexa, and although it helped, um, I really would like to wean off of it now since my life is pretty stress-free again. And um, you know, I'm working really hard this season and this time that I have off to be able to take care of myself, take care of my mental health, and take care of my physical health. Um, I think being like, you know, living in society, I think the problem is that. We are stuck in this cycle where we believe that we have to work really hard to be able to make money to afford the things that we want and um, I know the value of hard work I know the value of um, being in a good financial place to be able to take care of myself in my in the things that I care about and the people that I care about but um, I think that I've worked really hard on my business and um, I think that I'm able to take a breather right now, take this hiatus and allow myself to truly heal. Um, being able to take this time off and um, get off of the antidepressants because although it has helped me through several seasons of my life, I can't be dependent on it forever. It's just not healthy. Um, I want to be able to 
live without it and I think that right now it's a good time too. So I really do want to make a video about getting off of um, antidepressants and um, anti-anxiety meds because it's really hard. If you guys have taken anti-depression, anti-anxiety meds, um, have, if you've tried to get off of them, like you just, your brain no longer makes that chemical and you know, you have to rely on your brain to naturally start making those chemicals again. So, you know, like I do go through like a lot of like depressive feelings, although I know it's temporary and I know that um, it will go away once like the medication's out of my system and my body um, readjusts. So yeah. Um, for the insomnia, that was another really hard symptom that I dealt with and I felt like I just did not sleep at all when I had Cushing's disease and um, get, getting treatment and getting cured for Cushing's disease, um, it took a really long time to get my sleep schedule back and you know, I think that overall it has been resolved but I think that living in a lifestyle that can be very stress conducive, whether it's like um, work is high demand and you live in a city where there's just a lot of people and you're not in touch with yourself and you're not in touch with nature, you're not working on your mental health, you don't make the time to do it because you're busy and you're tired. Um, all of that can affect all of these psychiatric symptoms, right? And um, so I truly believe that you have to take care of your mental health and I truly believe that, you know, self-care is so important and um, the more you take care of your mental health, you know, whether that be taking time off of social media or journaling or, you know, all those other things, going to seek therapy, um, just putting more positive things into your mind and releasing a lot of negativity and, um, I think that can help tremendously and alleviate a lot of these symptoms after the fact that you're cured. And even during, you know, it's so important to take care of your mental health. I think that that's one thing I regret was not taking care of my mental health. You know, I it took me a really long time to be able to be kind to myself during Cushing's disease. And um, I felt like there was just so much self-hatred. I'm sure you guys heard from my previous videos of this like shame you feel when you're sick, even though it's not your fault. You just kind of like blame yourself, you know, for feeling the way you feel and you blame yourself for feeling these symptoms that are completely out of your control. And, you know, just know that's not your fault. Um, but I, I definitely regret not taking more time for mental health, but I also didn't have the tools and um, any guidance. And so that's why I want to make more videos to help you guys like really break down all of these like little symptoms and like what helped me and um, products I've tried that have has helped me for my mental health, my physical health. Um, and I will soon talk about physical symptoms because physical symptoms are just as important too. I know mental health is very important in the psychiatric symptoms, but I know that while you're depressed, um, the worst thing that can happen is for you to not recognize yourself in the mirror. So um, I will be talking about the physical symptoms. Another thing I want to mention about psychiatric symptoms is the short-term memory loss. Um, my memory loss has gotten so much better as time has gone by, but I do realize that um, mentally, I my, I'm just not firing as quickly as I used to be. I used to be really quick-witted. Um, I used to be able to, to, to just like read faster, comprehend things faster, and I truly believe that hypercortisolism has changed that. So I just have to accept that I might be operating on a slower state, but that doesn't mean that I've lost my intelligence. I still can think things and um, I still can comprehend things, but it just seems like it takes a longer time for the wheels to turn. And um, I don't know about you guys, but I do have this issue where um, I think one word and I say another or I'll swap words. Like, you know, instead of grapefruit, I say fruit grape or something like that. So um, let me know on the comments below if you have that issue too from Cushing's disease. 
All right, let's talk about the physical symptoms. Um, as you guys can see, I do look very different. Um, I have taken a lot of care in my physical appearance to help me feel like I've bounced back from um, Cushing's disease. Um, as you guys know, when you have Cushing's disease, you sometimes can't even recognize recognize yourself in the mirror anymore. And um, you, even though you've been treated or cured for it, um, a lot of the physical symptoms can still remain and it takes a long time for you to heal. And sometimes it's just really hard to bounce back from. I wanna share with you guys all the things that have helped me and I will be making more videos on that. And just to be able to talk about like each Thing that has helped me like truly helped me because I've tried everything okay guys like um, I'm a cosmetologist and an esthetician and um, you know being able to present myself the way I want to is very important to me so um, I literally have tried everything to help um, resolve my symptoms to help me feel more like myself again and to help me feel more beautiful so um, let's start talking about some physical symptoms that you know I had and um, how I resolved them. So the moon face, um, as you can see, my moon face is not really persistent anymore. Um, I have worked really hard to slim down my face. Um, my face was really bloated when I had Cushing's disease and um, it really bothered me. Um, and as you can see, it's, it's through these years in the videos um my moon face has shrunk but i did do a lot to my face that um that helped and um i will make a separate video just to talk about all the things that i've done that has helped me um get rid of my moon face and the things that work and the things that don't work and um as you can see i i mean maybe you can't but i still feel like it's not the way it was pre Cushing's, but you know, I have gotten older, um, but I do plan to keep continuing to, you know, help with the moon phase. So I just really can't wait to share um, all of my tips and tricks with you guys. Um, the hair loss, as you can see, my hair is not as thin as it used to be. I was almost going bald when I had Cushing's disease and, um, I think that my hair is growing back nicely. Um, I've done a lot, like a lot of things. Anything you have seen that has been sold on like Instagram or, you know, just ads um, and things for hair loss, I have tried. Um, I have not tried like Rogaine for women or anything like that, Minoxidil, but um, it's, everything's been natural and I can't wait to share my hair growth tips with you guys. Um, one thing that's really helped me right now is just like not coloring my hair anymore. Um, I used to like highlight my hair all the time too. And although it gave me like more volume and stuff, this is just my natural texture. Um, I do have a lot more hair growth ever since I stopped doing that and less hair loss. So there's that. Um, the next symptom, physical symptom was the weight gain. Um, as you guys can see, I am not gaining any weight. Um, I still eat pretty well. And um, after treatment for Cushing's disease, after going um, through the adrenalectomy, um, I did notice that my weight, uh, my weight was reducing and I wasn't gaining weight as much. Um, it took a while. It took about six to nine months for me to actually see that I was no longer retaining water. So it was mostly from like bloating and um, I wasn't retaining fat in my middle section anymore. And um, as time went by, I started to introduce like physical activity again and um, I guess eating somewhat healthy, but you know, my diet didn't change too much from when I had Cushing's because I've always just been more so of a healthy eater. And sometimes I binge, I do have binge eating problems and um, with the surgery, the adrenalectomy, it truly helped me to just be able to lose weight again and not have water retention without having to like go to extreme diet, dieting or um, working out to achieve some weight loss. Um, 
However, I did find a really great secret about having um, how to lose weight and um, maintain your weight and other great um, anti-aging benefits. So I can't wait to share with you guys on a separate video too, because this is just an update video and I just have so much great information to share with you guys. So just stay tuned. Acne and acne scars. Um, as you can see, I no longer have active acne. Um, my acne scarring has gotten a lot better. You can still see that I have some, um, but I've done a lot. Um, I worked at a med spa for a while and I learned all these great, amazing things to help um, with my skin. So um, I do wanna make another video for that. And um, all the things that did help me with my acne scarring. Um, again, when I found um, the resolution for my Cushing's disease, was to take out my tumor from my adrenal gland. Um, after that, the acne started to go away. Um, I had severe cystic acne, and you guys can see one of the videos of how bad it was. I'll link it down below. And um, once my Cushing's was resolved, my acne resolved too. But I was left with a lot of scarring and a lot of um, non-active acne that needed to purge out of my skin. So. I did a lot of things to help with that and um, I'm so excited to share with you guys because Cushing's disease acne, acne in general is very debilitating and um, you know, I know so many people who have dealt with it and I still know people who deal with it now and you know, sometimes it's hormone related, sometimes it's skincare related, sometimes you just freaking like, you know, eat a little bit of ice cream and then your face gets inflamed and it just really sucks. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy that that symptom has resolved for me. I was on Accutane for just like three months. Um, and that, and although like when I was treated for Cushing's disease and my acne stopped becoming active, um, the reason why my skin was able to purge was because of the Accutane and many other things. So I do want to have like a video about Accutane. Um, it's a crazy drug. I'm really thankful that it was able to help me. Um, would I do it again? I'm not sure. And I'll give you the reasons why soon. So I'm going to end this video with a really nice quote that I found the other day. Um, it's from Eckhart Tolle. Um, I love his books. I highly recommend them. And um, the quote is, the great arises out of small things that are honored and cared for. So that just really resonated with me. Um, I think that once we care for ourselves, we care for our mental health, we care for our physical health, we care for our spirituality, that, you know, the great will arise out of you. So yeah, that just, it's, it's, it's a good quote and um, it's food for thought. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys real soon. Bye.